So I know the easiest way to make something bigger or smaller inside of Illustrator is just to drag your cursor around it and then use the bounding box to scale. But the scale tool has some functionality that might surprise you. Welcome back designers, my name is Mike Pickett. I'm a graphic designer with nearly two decades in the industry. Today, we're gonna to have a look at the scale tool in a little bit more detail than maybe some of you have seen. Now, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. I don't expect you to do it now. Wait till the end of the video. All right, now before we hop into Illustrator, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an example here. The reason that I use the scale tool more than just the bounding box is that I can put in percentages I can also use the scale tool on just anchor points and the handles on those anchor points. So I'll walk you through those processes over inside of Illustrator. All right, so here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator and I've went ahead and placed a few different objects on the artboard that we're gonna work with to show you how the scale tool functions. I'm gonna start off with this very top piece. We're gonna go ahead and just click on this. I'm gonna grab my scale tool, which is the letter S on your keyboard. You can also go over to your toolbar and click on the little icon. To start with, I'm gonna show you a process that I use for rounding stuff out or for scaling handles on an anchor point if I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and click A, on my keyboard for my direct selection tool, the little white arrow. I'm gonna click this very top anchor point. I don't want such a sharp curve on this. I'm gonna use the scale tool to fix it. I used to draw out anchors or draw out rulers and space them out onto here and drag one handle over, drag the other handle over. It was just a pain. So now what I do is I use the scale tool. You can see when I hit S, it automatically highlights the center of that anchor for me. And then what I can do is I'm just gonna click it to make it active, and that's now my anchor point. And then I'm gonna drag either handle out. I'm just drag out from the center. And I'm just gonna let go when I see the percentage that I want, say 295, and let go. I'm gonna command click off, and you can see I get a nice even curve there. So we got almost a tombstone effect here, which can be a great shape if you're working with different vectors or doing logo design, badges, different stuff like that. It'll work with two anchors as well. So I'm gonna grab my direct selection again, and I've got two anchors down here. Now this one has a center path on it. Let me delete that real quick. I'm just gonna go up here, click the minus, and we're gonna highlight these two anchors then. I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard once again, and it's went ahead and lined up for me. Now I can click that pretty much anywhere. And if I need to get it back to center again, what I normally do is try and come down to the center and then just go here. So I'm gonna drag that back over and put it right on this center mark. Doesn't matter where it is, it doesn't need to be on the path, just as long as it's in the center is the main point. So that's why I'll normally use the center point of the object I'm working with to make sure that when I scale these, they come in to the center. So then I can click on either one. And again, I'm just gonna drag into the center and we now get those scaled in proportionately working with just anchor points in the scale tool. Now this bottom piece, the reason I've got this one is to show you an option because this piece has those rounded corners and there's a lot of situations where you maybe need to keep that same radius, but as you scale, you want it to increase with the size of the shape. So if I hit S on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit enter. That's gonna bring up my scale dialog box. And from here, I've got the option to go with a uniform scale, which I'm gonna do because we wanna keep this square. I'm gonna say 175%. But then if I take this and go scale corners, see what that did? So if I remove it, if I take it off, if it's not selected, those corners are gonna stay that same radius that they were when it was the smaller size. So normally you're gonna to wanna to make sure that scale corners is turned on so you keep that effect looking the same. Otherwise it can look kind of odd. Totally up to you, depends on what you're doing with your design of course. So our next example is this watch up here. Now this is a vector piece that I worked on and this is just a copy of it and it still has all of the paths in a stroke form. So they haven't been outlined yet. So this one we're gonna to use to show what happens if we go in and select this scale stroke and effects. So right now I've got it on. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. And we're gonna scale this up to 200%. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm just gonna command click off. And you see all those little white gaps in there? Well, that's because it didn't scale the stroke. So 
if I go ahead and hit, uh, let me just hit V here, I'm going to grab one of these, right, we're at 4.857. So let's just back up and Command Z, and I'm going to select a stroke again, well, 4.857. So it's exactly the same, and of course I don't want that. So when we're scaling up, we want to make sure, depending on the piece, that we have that scale stroke and effects. Now of course you can outline this first and then do your scaling and everything, but sometimes that's just not going to work for you. Sometimes you need to have this scale stroke and effects on. When I click OK on that one now, command click, everything's scaled up nicely. We can grab that same stroke and you can see that now we're at 8.5. Now let's go ahead and delete these. And let's delete the watch. We're going to pull this guy right up, right in the center. So with this one, I've got a pattern built into this. You saw the options that are in there. So again, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit S. I'm going to hit Enter. So this time we're looking at this transform objects and transform patterns. So I've got a pattern in this shape. Now. Most of the time, I may want to transform both of these. You can see we're up to 175%, but let's see what happens if I take off transform objects. So now all it's going to do is it's just going to scale the pattern. So let me put this down to 25%. Now we get the pattern filled right in. This may be what you want. It could also be that you want to keep the object the same, or you want to scale the object but keep the pattern the same. So let me go up to 125% and we've kept the pattern the same. We can also do both, and by doing both, it's gonna do the pattern and the object. Okay, so that's it. Pretty simple, but you can see the additional functionality that this adds over and above just using the bounding box. Of course, you do have other options inside of Illustrator, like our control bar up at the top. You can type different options into there. You can still do math up there. You can still do you know, percentages and things like that, but the scale tool, it just works for me. It, it's something that I've built into my workflow when I'm working on these vector pieces. So it's just become second nature. The more you work with these tools, the easier things become for you. And the more it makes sense to actually be using them. They're there for a reason. Other than, like I said the other day, that lens flare tool. I don't know why that's there still. All right, designers, that's it for me on this one. Hope you learned something. Again, I'm hoping that these videos are helping out. I'm getting a lot of great feedback. I've had designers that have been in the industry for just as long as me coming back and saying, hey, you know what? I didn't know that about Illustrator, so that's always great to hear. So if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, something that you'd like to see, go ahead and leave them down in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help you out. If they're easy things, I might be able to respond and just answer your question right there. If they're a little bit more difficult, it'd give me an idea for some future content. As always, I have to get back to work, so get out there and design something and I'll see you in the next video. Like the green light? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm just trying things out right now. We'll see where this all ends up. I'm not even going to try the black hand thing because it, it's just not working. Okay, this one's awkward.